Alors, Gaulois et Gauloises, ma banine en gros, maman, il y a l'artiste et Oyo. Priscille. Priscille Priscille. Priscille. Alors, Priscille, c'est la fille qui est toujours avec l'objet dans un concert. Oyo, maman, elle est. Donc, oncle, elle est. Oyo, maman, elle est. Et oncle, maman, elle est. Et moi, Priscille, l'artiste. Et oncle, elle est. Donc, je pense que. Dans ce moment, il y a un petit chassa. Il y a un petit chassa. Il y a un petit chassa. Entre temps, nous sommes la musique et nous avons l'autorisation parentale. Maman est une fois, c'est là, papier comme quoi, on a confié ma vie, comme ça, tout poussé par le boulot. Donc, chanteuse, ma vie, pousse-toi devant un peu. T'as peur Chanteuse, ma vie, c'est un peu plus de fou la vie. Donc, on a la belle, ma vie, chanteuse, on a l'autre, mais ça y est, on a 14 ans, comme on a eu principe. Mais entre temps, condition, on a eu des alliés, 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 à continuer de dire métier aux autres diplômes naïe et puis entre temps le bon naïe tout ça à ta titre si bien nous voyons déjà merci donc on se voit la semaine prochaine à Kinshasa tu vas prendre ton avion hein j'attends les papiers hein elle a peur alors il est malade il est mal vas-y moi chanson à présent non chante moi même c'est lui qui en aura ça 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 vas-y Okay, so I just watched this, and I took some notes. Uh, I just watched this um, this young lady, uh, Priscilla, Priscilla, Priscilla. I think I think her name is Priscilla. Anyway, the this story for some reason has just been coming to me all on my feed, all up in my, my, my space. And I just kind of thought, what the heck, why? Anyway, I've done a little bit more uh, research in this 
um, whole situation. First of all, I have to start with the Feregula is a very big musician when it comes to Congolese music. Very big. And he's starting to, you know, transcend. He's, you know, signed all these deals with Adidas and this, that, and the third. Um, and he's becoming a formidable house, you know, uh, in terms of his music, in terms of, you know, stadiums that he's managing to fill. He's doing a lot with his brand. And one can't be... What I'm about to say after this is not so much to shine, to, to sort of downplay his achievement because it, it's, it's nowhere near um, that. It's more of to highlight when we glamorize certain things, we miss certain points and then we, we regret it afterwards. And this is the situation um, that this young lady... Um, Priscilla, Priscilla, his, she's, she was spotted at a talent show. She's been put towards him as, you know, what, you know, he was very impressed with her. I'm, I'm literally cutting a long story short. From what I'm hearing, from what I've researched, she's, um, she's, she's, a, she's a good singer. Um, let's start with that. She's a good singer. Um, and what Ferre essentially is doing under that umbrella of I'm going to take her on. Uh, so Ferre has decided that this girl is going to be under her, sorry, his um, guardianship, his guidance and his management, etc., to boost his, her musical career, all of this kind of stuff. All the good stuff. On the surface, round of applause to Ferre for his successes and his continuous successes in the now and the future, plus also um, what he's doing in terms of picking up new talent. That being said, I have to go back and break this thing down because I see this all too often, especially with Congolese artists, especially with African artists. And I have to call certain things out because the worrying thing about this girl is first of all don't get it twisted she's a girl okay she's a girl so shows that the avenues of her being exploited is just so broad right she could be exploited in so many ways than one second of all I think my most my most the, the whole reason why I wanted to do this video is 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 trying to understand how this whole thing works as a as a parent as a guardian as a stranger as a businessman as a musician all, all of these layers apply so as a parent myself I was trying to understand the guardianship he says here in the video that he, with the you know he's trying to get the guardianship signed over from her mum to take her to France, so you know, to the next con concert, etc., etc. But then I'm like, why? Why does he need? Like, I could be educated on this. I've I've asked questions. I don't see why he needs mum to sign over guardianship. If you're just taken across the, you know, country, why can't mum come as a guardianship already? Like. As a minor, I wouldn't, I wouldn't personally leave my minor with anybody but me or their, or their parent or, or their, their, their father. I, I just don't see why. I, I don't get that part. That part just, it's baffling me. Um, why do you need guardianship just to take her across the borders? In fact, why do you need anybody to sign anything over? In terms of guardianship for this child, if all you're doing is taking her on business-wise, music-wise, um, mum can still mum can actively be her manager. So I, I'm questioning the mum constantly, like, hold on, why why do you need to sign guardianship? Now the reason why I'm questioning this is like just a little small snippet. We just had an incident not so long ago, just a few months ago, where we found out the history of another Congolese musician who also had guardianship signed over and we find that he basically 
allegedly was grooming said girl and she ended up having a child for said man so this is probably why this is like hold on hold on hold on hold on, hold on. are we not learning why are we hold on this just smells the same thing now hey before anybody comes to at me and says you said this about fairy that's not what i'm saying i'm not at any point indicating that that musician, which I'm not going to name, and this musician are one of the same. They're not. What I am implying is simply a case of how do we control or how do we safeguard if the parents aren't safeguarding? For example, let's assume for all intents and purposes that Firigola is 100% God's saint. I have no reason to believe otherwise, okay? But there will be an environment within these music scene that a 14-year-old girl or boy should not be privy to. At what point, at how much control does Firigola, the individual, have to police all of these incidences that could occur in his absence, during his absence, behind his back, whatever the case may be, that the mother is so assured that by signing, she has already pre-checked and pre you know, like she's questioned all of these things. I I'm just confused. How do you question? D did she question, first of all? Did you question that, okay, when my daughter is staying at the hotel, who's she staying with? When my daughter is here, who's she staying with? Because I'm damn sure she's not going to be staying with Ferry at his hotel. Do you understand? Because there's a, there's a point where she's an employee and he's going back home to his kids. What happens there? Um, who in, you know, what, what um, would you call it? Who is going to be her social worker? You know, making sure all her, her homework is done. Who's going to be making sure she's, you know, she gets up and going. Who's making sure she's educated? And, okay, now that you're doing this, you've got two jobs, essentially. you got to do this, got to do this. I'll give an example. One of my siblings has um, a child in modelling. Neither one of the parents don't go with the child. Okay? Neither one. So if dad can't make it, mom is going. If mom can't make it, dad is going. If that can't happen, no one else is going. <laughs> it's just going to happen to be on the date and time in which they're, either one of them is available. So every time their child goes to promote anything, whether it be a clothing line, a shoe line, or whatever the case may be, or if it's just a paracetamol advert, that boy that girl will be accompanied by either mum or dad. Okay? And at that point, the mum or the dad is in a position to judge what's going on in front of them, what's going on behind them, what is suitable, what's being played. Because a lot of these places, they play a lot of music. What's being played around their surroundings? Is it suitable for her? Who's smoking what? Who's drinking what? These little things is where I'm, I'm questioning the parents here because I constantly hear this. My entire life I've heard musicians taking on this and taking on that. And yeah, but the value of life for that of that child that you're taking on, you're not going to parent them. You're just, they just gave you rights to them. Who is going to look after and parent that child while the parents are not there? And I never hear them talk about parenting that child. I've always heard about them saying they're going to accompany us to play here and, and go there. Cool. Fantastic. It's probably a dream come true for this young lady and her family. But that's the problem. Within the dream, you lose sight of what's important. What's important here is A, maintaining her education, which is fantastic to hear him say, oh, yeah, we're going to, you know, continue education. Great. But shouldn't she already be in school anyway? What what was stopping her from being in school? So then it comes back down to mom and dad. Why is he saying, I'm going to take her back to kin so she could continue her education? Why was she out of education in the first place? These kind of questions just keep bugging me. Um, question. I never hear contracts. I always hear, I'm going to do this with her. I'm going to do that with her. But I never hear 
contracts, nor do I see them sit on a table like footballers. African footballers, we know. Yeah, you'll see the agent, the mom, the dad, the whatever, the whole family signing contracts of we've signed this and he's going to do this for five years. He's going to go here, blah, blah, blah. And at the same time, the the um, the onus is on the club to make sure that the kids are educated, monitored, all of that kind of stuff uh, while the parents are not there. Uh, we've just seen a perfect example of parents that are constantly in their kids' business is uh, Bellingham. Mum and dad literally split their 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 their, their um, duties. One is with one son, and the other one's with one son. They just <sighs> okay. Let's take it back a little bit. I understand that resources, access, money, desperation has a lot to play in this whole thing that I'm talking about. But you have to start somewhere. The value of your child cannot be as simple as I'm just going to sign her away because Feli Gola is a famous guy. It, it just can't be. It, it's, just, it's just, it saddens me because it's like, that's it. That's it. You have nothing on paper. You have nothing set on stone. You just have a promise. <sighs> Mate, it's, 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 I, I, Please correct me if I'm wrong. If there is a contract and all these things, uh, these points have been put in and mommy is going with her, mommy's going to travel with her, mommy's going to be there 24-7 because someone needs to be with this girl 24-7. She's 14 years old in a foreign country all on her own. She already looks nervous just on the video. But I fear that, I could be wrong, that money has a part to play and that mom is looking at the dollar signs that she probably got behind the scenes or she's as aspirations of what she could get in the out of this and she's thinking that first she smelt the money already and not thinking about the trauma that could potentially come to her child and there's quite a bit because like as i've said so many times before girls have more to lose in any kind of exploitation situation than boys if you allow your daughter to be put in a situation like this without the due diligence, there's more to lose here. And in the other musician that I you know, alluded to earlier, that child has now got a child and that child is, is a child broken. So now you've got two generations of broken, broken people. We're just breeding more and more broken people if this is what we, we you know, if all we think about is just money, sing her off. My next point was gonna be, or well, the next thing that was bugging me. The the mum is on screen, but where's the father? Where's the dad? I'm not seeing dad anywhere. I don't know if he's in the picture, but if he is, um, I expect father to be here. I expect father to give his two pence. Maybe he objects. And if we hear about the other story, dad was objecting to the point. So, I just want to know, okay, where's the father? Why isn't the father here talking, you know, his part? Why is it just mum giving away the kid? Uh, does, does he know? Um, and someone like Fere, I would say, should have been looking at this as both parents should be here. Um, I don't give two monkeys about the uncle. Uh, being there, it's not his child. <laughs> of course, it's not your child. You're just you're just here for the cash. You're not, you know. Okay, he might have raised her, etc., etc. Dad's not in the picture. I mean, that apparent, so we already know. Like for example, everyone knows the case with Simone Biles and her family. Make it apparent, so everyone. Okay, so we're not looking for that because that person's already, you know, tarnished that or broken that bridge or whatever the case may be. So then I ask, why take her on tour straight away? I, I then start breaking it down. I'm like, well, if it was my kid, you're not taking her on tour straight away. No, heck no. Not at 14. And, and it, yes, she could go on tour at 14, but you've just discovered her. Surely there should be a cooling off period where... A set of nurturing to build you into play. Again, I'll give an example of Beyonce, the Destiny's Child, and to the Beyonce that is today. 
even the Jackson 5 started off slowly. You, you build them up to the big event, not just straight into the deep end because you could traumatize the kid, right? For example, the, the Jackson 5s would perform at little tiny church halls and this, that, you know, you know, community stuff. Same with the Beyonce's. You, there's videos all over the place of showing them, you know, we're working you up. All right, and then you, you perform on TV, local TV station, local radio station. Then this did this just doesn't seem to be a plan. It just seems to be right. Get in there. And who cares? You know, um, this girl has no training whatsoever in music. She's not like one of those Mickey Mouse Club kids that's been doing this for a long time. She's got no training. She's just got pure talent. Someone needs to harness that, but you also have to give her the stage presence. She's singing here, and she's, she's, she seems very, very scared, very, very nervous. Now, how, where is the, who's asking those questions? What are you going to do, and how are you going to do it to, to, to sort of nurture her from a, from, from a soft rosebud to a blooming flower? You know what I mean? How, how are you doing that? But I don't think anybody's asking those questions because the comments I'm reading is just, oh, yeah, well done, family. Well done, family. Great. But what does that look like? What is it in in in, in layman's terms? What does it look like? Um, the other training, which is probably a bit too much to ask for, but I'll mention it anyway. It's, it's, it's the business. The business of... When she goes to stay and, and, and perform with him, who's in charge of the kids? How does that work? What do they do? Do they have chores? Do they have um, music lessons they have to attend? Do they have, um, what do I call it? I mean, they go to school. He says he's going to make sure she goes to school, but not music school. Who is, is there a vocal coach that's going to be available? All of these different things. And, and, and in terms of nutrition and nourishment, how does she, how does that um, come into play? Who's feeding her and who's making sure she's eating well? Who's making sure she's not with the grown up musicians when they're having their little, you know, private moments, adult times? <sighs> the training and all of this for me, it's just okay. I said, why does she need guardianship? And I'm gonna say it again. Why does she need to sign the guardianship? Um, why does the mom need to sign a guardianship? I, I, I'm just, I'm confused. You want my child to become your musician or you're agreeing to take over, uh, you know, her talent and nurture it to becoming a star. I'll be damned if I let you anywhere with her alone. I don't know you. Yeah, you could have 10,000 billions of dollars. Jesus Christ, you could be Elon Musk. You could be Jeff Bezos. I don't know you <laughs> and there's no way and my my skin is going to be like oh yeah he's got gazillions of millions so he must be trusted no history has proven that all too often the people with big money big pockets and influence yeah don't necessarily turn out to be the right people most of the time okay so so my questions is like eh? i'm not hearing this is the structure of this in you know this um partnership because it should just be business transaction there shouldn't be anything uh, sentimental about it. it should be business we can be all sentimental about it because we're the audience we're seeing it but the mum the family it needs to be business um <sighs> yeah and the other question i had was i don't know how congo deals with the uh, potential risks of having a minor or even no let me just put it this way the signing of rights from one parent to another person how much is the government in or the legal system invested in making sure that the safeguarding of kids are there i mean i, I can already tell just by the sheer numbers of other companies and entities exploiting our children through celebrities adopting kids and stuff like that in Africa and and sexual exploitation of, of minors and this, that, and that. I can already tell that there isn't really much of a shape in there, but I want to be ignorant enough to say, because I live away from Africa, I can automatically assume the worst. So if I, you know, 
I want to know how does that look like? I, I, I'm, this, my research so far has proven me right that there isn't a lot of um, there isn't a lot of any rights. Well, there is things written down on paper, but enforcement is second is zero. So there's that. Um, yeah, so that brings me into that due diligence that I wrote down. Like, who's keeping tabs? Is social service? I don't even think there is a social services, but I could be wrong. I've never heard of it. I've asked, and no one's telling me there is. So, so a kid can just be exploited. Let me break down why that's a big problem. If there is no due diligence by the law, or there's no due diligence by the family, a country that is far more populated by young people is a country destined to just be destroyed because what you essentially are having is a repeat of the same thing over and over again a broken child births a broken child and a broken child births a broken child a broken child births a broken child there is not going to be any wisdom there's not going to be any morals there's not going to be any ethics it's just going to be a free for all all man for himself and it don't matter if that's your mom your dad or the, which is where we're already heading and that's primarily where the desperation comes into it because now mommy's thinking well i gotta get my money because i had me a girl so i got to get paid no if you just think about the dollar signs then she gets older she thinks about the dollar sign and eventually we have no culture no country no family uh, no values no morals everything is just disappears so you you either stand for something or you stand for nothing uh, in this world and and in this case the law doesn't seem to want to back up, you know, the, the due diligence of checking on these kids. Um, the amount of orphans that we have in the country is ridiculous. But then we have this other side of it where there is family, but they're not even walk, watching the due diligence. You know, um, it's worrying times, very, very worrying times, because there was once upon a time when I was doing my research where a child going into music was a big taboo. Like how could, like don't, you know, you might as well be a prostitute. That's how bad it was. Um, we are at a time now because of desperation and because of I gotta get mine, selfishness. This is what's happening. The due diligence of this young lady is gonna missed because even in the comments, people are not thinking, okay, so what does that look like? People are not questioning. If you question, you'll likely get more answers. Um, well, at the very least, you're shaking the boat. <laughs> anyway, that's that, due diligence. Um, I spoke about... What I want to touch on is... There's so many people in and around musicians. I worry how a 14-year-old will survive predators unless that musician has full long control of every human being that comes in through and out of you know their surroundings or has access to that little girl everyone is not a saint and not everyone has the best interest at heart forget sexual exploitation just simple things like someone going in there uh, a young lady uh, much older than her she feels like that is her you know she looks up to her and she and the 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 older lady tells her, oh, well, you know, if you want to get men's attention, you got to wear something a little bit more provocative. You got to show your skin because you can see in this video, this girl is very well dressed, very polite, very, you know, humble. Now, someone comes in and starts telling her, no, you got to show your skin. You got to do this. You got to get, you know, BBL. You got to get all, all of this kind of things is the <laughs> exploitation I'm talking about where someone's trauma traumatizing this young lady or in better words, grooming her to become something that she shouldn't even become simply because no one is controlling who has access to her, what caliber of people have access to her. And I could see this happening. She would, you know, I could see, I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm, I'm not a fortune teller, but I could just see that at some point, somewhere, somehow, this young lady will be exploited by other people in in different ways someone might say to her oh you see that money that he's paying you well if you give it to me uh, i'll i'll put it in a bank account for you 
for example. And then next thing you know, it's disappeared. So the exploitation weighs the soul far. But how is Ferry going to manage that? How is Ferry going to make sure that that doesn't happen? You know? Because one thing I heard from the history of Congolese music and the history of women musicians, whether they be vocalists or guitarists or whatever, instrumentalists, none of them, maybe one, I think I can only think of one at the top of my head, that has managed to go past making their own career without, um, sorry, let me rephrase that. So we have one artist who from the get-go was her own self, whereas the others all started off with um, management that eventually became their husbands and their lovers, etc, etc. So just by sheer history, the odds are stacked against this young lady because nine times out of ten, our female musicians have all ended up sleeping or marrying or some sexual nonsense with their managers, okay? And because of that, they've walked away with very little in terms of royalties, rights, and this, that, and the third. So who and how do you protect this young lady from that happening where we can at least say, she got her, she still receives her royal checks when, when you know, her, her time is gone. Or that she could be long-lasting as Celine Dion, as she portrays Celine Dion so much. You know, Celine Dion's been around for a long time, for over 30 years. So I want her to have a 30-year career, but I don't want it to be her money is being exploited, uh, the paperwork, she gets no rights for anything. She at least get vocal rights for everything. You know, and like I said, We've got our two greatest musicians, have all said it once upon a time. Uh, two female, greatest female musicians, uh, Chalamon and Billy Abel, they've all said they've been exploited by their partners, or, you know, either they married them knowing full well that, yeah, they, yeah, you, you, you just sign your stuff away because it's my husband. Why would he do wrong by me? And we know women can be very, you know, that's why I asked about where's the dad, um, because mum is making here all emotional decisions to me, as far as I'm concerned. Um, she's not making um, strategic decisions. Again, from what I'm seeing, um, I don't see logic. I'm seeing a lot of sentiments and, you know, yeah, my daughter is being endorsed or he's being, you know, she's been spotted by Philly. Cool. Yeah, that's fantastic. Philly's going to manage her. What does that look like? Because ultimately, what if you weren't getting the best deal? What if um, another musician is going to give you a better deal? Did you shop around? Because if she's that good, she's that good. <laughs> that's, the, that's the other thing. If she's that good, she's that good. Like, get that in your head. If your daughter is that good a singer, that means she's that good. That also means that you could have gone past Virengola. You could have gone to Nigerians. You could have gone to Americans. You could have got a better deal. Did you shop around? Or did you just settle for, well, this will have to do? You know? And that's the, you know, like, I remember there was a bidding war once upon a time for Drake. Like, everyone was trying to get Drake. Every single Tom, Dick and Harry who had a record label with some influence was trying to get Drake. Jay-Z was fighting hard to get Drake. Everybody was like, it was like, you got to sign Drake, you got to sign Drake. In the end, he signed for cash money. Mm -hmm. But think about the fact that everyone wanted, everyone was shopping. Chris Brown, the same. Chris Brown, the same. Everyone was trying to shop to get Chris Brown, Chris Brown, Chris Brown, Chris Brown. You gotta ask yourself that question um, with this situation, but you know. Um, the other thing I was gonna say is, this is just a side note. Um, this idea of creating enemies with her and a previous musician that Ferengola had signed and made in it ended south. 
She's a 14-year-old kid. Have some decency, for God's sake. Why would you bring a 14-year-old into grown folk business? That lady is a grown woman. Whatever occurred between Fairy Gola and her and her contract has nothing to do with this young lady. You, what you've done there is you've, it's, again, this, this exploitation thing again, where you put a young child, child, minor, into a situation that has nothing to do with her. And you've exposed her to potential hate from her fans, hate from anybody else who's envious of her success or her, you know, due success. We, we've got to protect our kids a lot better than that. And I just don't see why you need to pin that into a story. Um, anyway, I'll try to keep this a short video. Um, so... generosity is being thrown around here i heard that oh generosity generosity is it generous i, I don't see the generosity because she's going to make sure she, he's going to make sure he goes to she goes to school well that shouldn't have been his duty to make sure of. that should have been her parents um there is nothing no monetary value added to her or sp said he hasn't said anything in the lines of how her future is going to plan out with him behind her. Um, he has no reputation that supports the lack of um, that information. For example, what I mean is... Fere Gola has musicians, and not just him, but others as well. They have musicians. At the most, you will get to sing a song. At the most, you'll get to be part of the music videos and that kind of thing. But just like how he's a rare breed himself, Fere Gola, having left really huge bands and really huge personalities in the bands that they, he came from, just like him... It's rare even in the men. I think, if I remember correctly, the most successful individuals to have left um, major bands is Ferry and Fali. So we don't even have more than my hand can count. So a girl leaving a band, sorry, leaving a band to become a solo artist, again, it's unheard of. There are, like the girl, you know, um, Rebel there that has been, you know, she, she left Fairy and she, she's gone to, to, to bigger, better things. She hasn't reached the status of Fairy or Fali yet. I hope she does, then we could at least, you know, um, <laughs> reduce that statistics. Um, so I, there's no generosity here. This is just pure business. Uh, and it's often too, mar too many times when we confuse business with... Oh, he was so kind-hearted. No, he's going to get paid. He's going to get paid. But you make sure she gets paid. Properly. You know? If at all. Um, did that. Did that. Did that. And that. And that. Oh. Now we're going to come to the conclusion. Um, I want to say... The other thing I noticed is the girl does not sing English. Um, typical of someone who doesn't speak English to not sing English. She sings the, the sound of the words that she hears. So it would be nice for someone to educate her on the language, to be able to sing it, to be able to read it, so she can at least deliver the full potential of the words because um, she was eating up a lot of words because she didn't know the word. Um, just a, a FYI. The other thing for me to end on this is Congo has undoubtable amount of talent. Undoubtable. In so many fields, probably every field. But what we never seem to do right, especially when it comes to talented children is we never put 
kubeta city, like hard on how this is going to drive. We've seen the Britney Spears and how fame can destroy a person. We've seen it, Macaulay Culkin, we've seen it. The point I'm making is there is so much talent but we have to start leading by example at some things. Maybe this is the thing that we should choose to lead by example on. Pull that girl aside. Pull that mum aside. Okay, let's make sure she gets everything that she's supposed to get from this deal. And let's make sure she is not a statistic of another failed star. Okay, let's make sure that. How do we do that? How do, what does that look like? And then putting her in a position where she doesn't get waffled in by the money and starts doing this, I'm going to sue my parents thing. All of those things come intertwined. There is so many successful stories of young stars who end up being fantastic. Okay, I already said the Beyonce's. I'm not going to say the, the, the Jackson 5, but I'll say Janet Jackson at the very least. Um, child actress, child singer, boom, here she is. She's still doing it till today. Okay, Celine Dion started off very, very young as well. All, there is good examples, but if you look at all the good examples, someone was tough. Someone was tough and wasn't having it. And even if I take it out of um, music and bring it into bar, uh, sorry, uh, tennis, basketball, Michael Jordan's mum was hard. Tennis, the Williams, Richard Williams don't play with her, his kids. Don't mess, don't, mm -mm. he was there at the interviews. He was there every single step of the way. You're not playing with my children. And you're not playing with his contract. Michael Jordan signed a contract that has never been signed before because his mum was like, it's my son. It's his name on the shoe or nothing. This is how you become, you know, we, 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 we make sure our children are kept safe. This is how we do it. You should be your child's manager. You shouldn't really, I mean, you shouldn't let anybody else take your child you should never sign your child away to anyone anywhere anytime and under no circumstances because what you're essentially saying is whatever happens happens um because you're not there so that child is alone um so for for the positive nature of this i applaud the incentive. I applaud the idea of taking young talent and nurturing it. If it's for the, all the right reasons, yes, bring it on more the merrier. Let's not stop at music. Let's make it in everything, engineering, whatever, science, you know, all of that stuff. Let, medicine, let's not stop there. Let's take every talent and make it great. However, let's do it right. Let's do right by the child. Let's do right by the future to ensure they actually have a future they can rely on so that when the music has dried up, because not everyone gets 30 years. Some people, you might get 10 minutes of fame. Some people get 30 years of fame, okay? When it dries up, they've at least got a life that they could say, this is what I gained from my music. And yes, it ran out, but you know what? I managed to build this and I managed to get this, okay? Um, and that's how you secure future. Um, anyway, um, my nose is running. Um, I, I want to end with that. I want to say this is not a batching. Um, a, a, I'm not here to back batching. Bash um, Fury. I'm not here to put him down on his achievements. I'm not here to put anybody down. I'm simply pointing out the things that we should be um, more focused on rather than all that shines, you know, because not all that shines is gold and let's not make the same mistake and then 10 years time we'll be like i didn't see that coming no you did because it was right there it was right in your face but you did nothing about it so let's do that <laughs>